Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's lecture in our series on the gamma function. And today I'm going to discuss a really amazing identity of the gamma function, namely the Euler sine reflection formula, a really incredible identity that connects the gamma function to the sine function. So our order of business for today is just to prove this amazing relationship. Again, it's called the Euler sine reflection formula. And this formula states the following. This formula for the gamma function, it states the following, namely, gamma of x times gamma of 1 minus x equals pi over sine of pi times x. So that's what we're going to prove today. But in order to prove this identity, we need to recall one of the results which we developed in one of our earlier videos, which is the sine product formula. The sine infinite product formula states that the sine of s has an infinite product, namely the product of x times 1 minus x squared over pi squared, close parenthesis, times 1 minus x squared over 4 pi squared, close parenthesis again, times 1 minus x squared over 9 pi squared, I hope you all are seeing the pattern here, times 1 minus x squared over 16 pi squared, and so on, dot, 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 it's an infinite product. So I want to make one change to this formula which we'll need for this video. I'm going to look at sine of pi times x. So when we do that, we substitute pi times x for x into our formula, so we get this equals pi times x times 1 minus pi times x quantity squared. close parenthesis, minus pi x quantity squared over 4 pi squared, close parenthesis again, times 1 minus pi times x quantity squared over 9 pi squared, close parenthesis, times 1 minus pi x quantity squared over 16 pi squared, close parenthesis, and so on, dot, dot, dot. So when we make that substitution of pi times x for x, we can simplify. So I'm going to just distribute that exponent and get rid of those parentheses, so that becomes pi squared x squared, and we'll do the same thing for the next term. We'll distribute the exponent again, that's pi squared x squared, and I'll do that for the other terms as well. And then we see that our pi squareds cancel in the numerator and the denominator there. So we can write sine of pi times x equals pi times x times 1 minus x squared over 1, close parenthesis, times 1 minus x squared over 4, close parenthesis again, times 1 minus x squared over 9, close parenthesis, times 1 minus x squared over 16, and so on, dot, dot, dot. So this is a really important result for our video today, so I'm going to put a blue box around that. And I'm actually going to keep this formula on the screen for the entirety of this video. So let's move that to the top of the screen. And now I'll ask you to recall something about the gamma function, specifically our infinite product definition of the gamma function, which states that gamma of x equals the limit as p approaches infinity of the product p factorial 
times p to the x all over x times x plus 1 times x plus 2 and so on. I'll just extend that line there. And so on. We'll put times x plus 3 dot 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 all the way up to x plus p. That's the last term in that product in the denominator. And this again is the Gauss infinite product formula for the gamma function, which we derived in our video on the infinite product form of the gamma function if you need to review that. So now we have gamma of x, we can write gamma of negative x using this same formula. So that would be the limit as p approaches infinity of the infinite product p factorial times p to the negative x all over negative x times negative x plus 1 times negative x plus 2 times negative x plus 3 and so on dot 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 all the way up to times negative x plus p. And now I'm going to make a cosmetic change to the terms in the denominators. Instead of writing x plus 1, I'm going to write 1 plus x. Instead of x plus 2, I'm going to write 2 plus x. And the next term I'm going to write 3 plus x, and so on. And for the last term I'm going to write p plus x. And I'll do the same thing with the product in the second line. I'm going to write 1 minus x instead of negative x plus 1. And I'm going to write 2 minus x, 3 minus x, and then finally p minus x in the denominator there. And now I want to multiply these two expressions together. Gamma of x times gamma of negative x, and that gives us the limit as p approaches infinity of p factorial times p to the x all over x times 1 plus x times 2 plus x times 3 plus x dot 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 I'll just extend this line a little more dot 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 all the way up to p plus x that's our gamma of x right there that infinite product and that's going to multiply gamma of negative x, which we found equals p factorial times p to the negative x, all over negative x times 1 minus x times 2 minus x times 3 minus x dot all the way up to p minus x. And I'll just put some brackets around those because I ran out of room there. And let's just move that up to the top of the screen where I have a little more room. So now I'm going to combine the terms in my numerator and rearrange them slightly. So I'm going to have, let's I'll get rid of that multiplication sign and combine them. We're going to have p factorial times p factorial times p to the x times p to the negative x. Well, those two terms just cancel each other out. That equals 1. So I can rewrite this expression as limit as p approaches infinity of p factorial times p factorial over this denominator. And the terms in the denominator can be factored as follows. For that 2 plus x, I can pull out the 2 there and write that as 2 times 1 plus x over 2. Ditto the next term, I can pull out a 3 from that term and write it as 3 times 1 plus x over 3. And I can do that for all of the terms up until p plus x, which I can write as p, I'll factor out a p there, p times 1 plus x over p. And I can do this with the other terms as well. So that one becomes 2 times 1 minus x over 2. And the next one is 3 times 1 minus x over 3. And the last term will be p 
times 1 minus x over p. So I can replace the denominator with that factored form. And hopefully it shouldn't be too difficult to see why that factorization of the denominator is useful. Because when I rewrite this expression, when I look at the denominator, I have 1 times 2 times 3 all the way up to p. That's p factorial. And then I have another p factorial in my denominator. And so I have in my numerator p factorial times p factorial. And in the denominator, I have p factorial times p factorial times the rest of the denominator, which is x times 1 plus x over 1 times all the other terms up to 1 plus x over p. And that's times negative x times 1 minus x over 1 times all the other terms up to 1 minus x over p. So the p factorial terms cancel in the numerator and denominator, and I'll just move that up to the top line there. So this expression equals the limit as p approaches infinity of 1 over all this business in the denominator. And now I'm going to cleverly rearrange these terms. So I have x, and I'm going to bring that negative x right next to it. And then I have 1 plus x over 1. And I'm going to bring the 1 minus x over 1 right next to it. So let's do that. 1 plus x over 1 times 1 minus x over 1. And I'm going to group together all the other terms in the same exact way. 1 plus x over 2 times 1 minus x over 2, and so on. Now if I look at 1 plus x over 1 times 1 minus x over 1, well that just equals 1 minus x squared over 1. Similarly, 1 plus x over 2 times 1 minus x over 2, that just equals 1 minus x squared over 4. Similarly, the next term will be 1 minus x squared over 9, and so on, all the way up to 1 minus x squared over p squared. So I'm going to replace those terms in the denominator as follows. And then we can just move the whole formula up to the top line there. And now we're very close to being done here. We're going to multiply both sides of the expression by negative x. And when we do that, we get gamma of x times gamma of negative x times negative x. And the negative x in the denominator, of course, cancels on the right-hand side. So this expression equals the limit as p approaches infinity of 1 over x times quantity 1 minus x squared over 1, close parenthesis, times 1 minus x squared over 4, close parenthesis, times 1 minus x squared over 9, close parenthesis, times 1 minus x squared over 16, close parenthesis, dot, 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 all the way up to 1 minus x squared over p squared. Well, this expression in the denominator now is really close to looking like sine of pi times x. What do we need to do? We need to multiply the right-hand side of the equation by what a former math teacher of mine called a creative form of 1. We're going to multiply the right-hand side by pi over pi. So when we do that, we get pi times 1 in the numerator and pi times that whole expression in the denominator. And then that expression in the denominator just equals sine of pi times x. Well, this is pretty cool. We have sine of pi times x now in our denominator. So I'm going to rewrite this expression. Yeah, triple exclamation point. We're going to rewrite this expression in the following way. Gamma of x times gamma of negative x times negative x equals pi over sine of pi times x. And now we just have to make one more improvement to this formula. We know from the properties of the gamma function that n times gamma of n, that just equals n times n minus 1 factorial. So that's the same thing as saying gamma of n plus 1. n times gamma of n equals gamma of n plus 1. Therefore, the expression there that I've underlined the expression negative x times gamma of negative x, that must then equal gamma of negative x plus 1. Or alternatively, we could write that as gamma of 1 minus x. Therefore, we get the final form of the Euler sine reflection formula for the gamma function, gamma of x times gamma of 1 minus x 
equals pi over the sine of pi times x. Well, this is about as beautiful a formula as you're going to find in mathematics. Let's put a box around that. Our work is done for the day. I hope that you guys have really enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed creating it. Thank you for watching the video, and if you enjoyed it, please click like or subscribe to my channel. Thanks, and see you next time.